Thank you and, uh, and welcome to another media briefing here from uh, Kenyatta International Conference Center where we are discussing different issues uh, to do uh, with the nation. I'm very, very pleased today to be accompanied by our esteemed uh, police commissioner, who you know very well, uh, Mr. Itere. And uh, we are going to give you different statements and different viewpoints. And then afterwards, we'll be able to take your questions and be able to answer the questions accordingly. Popote ulipo katika nchi yetu ya Kenya nasema karibu tena katika mfumo mwingine wa hotuba kutoka kwa serikali ukiwa kaunti yoyote ukiwa nyanda za juu za chini kaskazini kusini magharibi mashariki bonde la ufa nasema karibu tena hivi leo ni siku nyingine ya Alhamisi tukiwa hapa katika jimbo la kimataifa la Jomo Kenyatta nikiwa pia nimeambatana na commissioner wa polisi bwana Itere ambaye apaweza ataweza kujibu maswali tofauti na kuweza kuongea kuhusu mambo tofauti basi tuapa hotuba fupi kwanza Alafu baadaye nitaweza kumpisha ndugu yangu bwana Itere aweze kuwapa pia hotuba ambayo pia amewaandalia. After I give my press uh, we give my press briefing and uh, he gives you a few uh, pointers I'm going to request you if you're going to ask a question please tell us your name and your media house and because of our numbers if we can just ask one question at a time and then maybe you may get a chance to ask a repeat question that gives more people an opportunity to ask questions. It's called the principle of democracy. The objectives and overall strategy of the operation against the Al-Shabaab terrorist organization. The Kenyan government wishes to clarify and to reiterate its objectives and operation objectives against the terror organization Al-Shabaab, the ob uh, operation strategies rather. Al-Shabaab presents a clear and present danger to the security of the world and especially of the East African region. Let me repeat that. Al-Shabaab presents a clear and present danger to the security of the world and especially of the East African region. Al-Shabaab is a terror organization that has made it impossible for there to be peace and stability in Somalia. The African Union and IGAD have sanctioned an intervention to root out this terror organization so as to provide peace in the region and to help Somali government establish its authority. The Kenya government's objective is to pursue and curtail the operations of the terror organization Al-Shabaab, which has become a threat to Kenya's security and economy. To this end, the Kenyan government's strategy is to destroy Al-Shabaab's network within the shortest time possible. Our troops are fighting alongside those of the transitional federal government of Somalia. Kenya has no plans or intentions to stay in Somalia an hour before beyond necessary. Let me repeat that. Kenya has no plans or intentions to stay in Somalia an hour beyond necessary. Once our objective is met as per the framework of AU and IGAD, Kenyan troops will withdraw and leave the security operations to AU mission troops and TFG troops. On the issue of refugees, the government wishes to clarify and to make it clear that Kenya will guarantee the safety and rights of refugees in Kenya. The government has no intention of closing any refugee camp or expelling any refugees. The government, I'll repeat again, wishes to make it very clear that Kenya will guarantee the safety and rights of refugees in Kenya. And lastly, the government of Kenya thanks all Kenyans and the international community for its continued support and we continue to ask all Kenyans to be diligent and to identify any suspicious people who might be working with Al-Shabaab. In this effect, for example, the government requests all Kenyans to report to the police the identity of any person that they know who might have left the country to go to Somalia for Al-Shabaab training or is in Somalia so that we can be able to track them down. Because we are aware that some Kenyans have been recruited and taken over to Somali for indoctrination. So if you know of any Kenyan, your neighbor's son, your cousin's uh, friend, your, your kiosk man's daughter or son, who you know at one time alikuwa mepotea, ameenda Somalia, na amerudi, because those people, we can only believe 
came back to undertake the work of Al-Shabaab. So let us know. Wherever you are, let your chief know, let the police know, and we'll be able to round them up uh, immediately. Kwa ufupi kwa lugha ya Kiswahili kwa wananchi pote walipo kabla sijamuita commissioner ni kusema ya kwamba serikali yetu ingependa wananchi wafahamu ya kwamba ni yetu ya kwenda katika nchi ya Somalia ni kuwatafuta hawa al-Shabab ambao wametupa shida sana katika eneo letu. Na tunaenda tukiwa katika nguzo ama tukiongozwa kabisa na sheria na mwafaka na makubaliano ya umoja wa Afrika pamoja na chama cha IGAD. Serikali ya Kenya hainui kuishi, kutua ama kukaa katika nchi ya Somalia. Majeshi yetu ambao wanapigana akiwa pamoja na majeshi ya nchi ya Somalia yakapomaliza kazi yao yataondoka mara moja ya reje hapa. Na itaacha kazi ya kulinda na kuendeleza kazi kule Somalia kwa majeshi ya Afrika uh, ya Afrika yale yanaitwa Amazon pamoja na serikali ya Somalia. Tungependa kuona hali ya Somalia imeweza kuwa nafuu kuliko vile ilivyokuwa. Hatuna nia yote ya kuwafukuza wakimbizi wa wote wakimbizi wote walio katika nchi yetu wanalindwa na watendelea kuwa hapa kama wageni wetu kulingana na sheria zetu na sheria za umoja wa kimataifa. Na mwisho ni kusema ya kwamba tunawarudishia tunwa asante sana wote ambao wameweza kufanya kazi pamoja nasi hasa wa Kenya na pia kuomba ya kwamba kama unamfahamu mtu yote ambaye mtoto wake ama kijana yote alikuwa ameenda kule Somalia ama unashuku alienda kule kupata training ya Al-Shabab Somalia basi uweze kueleza polisi. Basi kwa machache na furai sana kwa wakati huu kumkaribisha Commissioner Itere na nafikiri polisi wetu kweli wameonyesha ujasiri wao kabisa na wamefanya kazi nzuri kabisa kwa sababu wakati liona grenade zimetupwa wameweza kufanya kazi yao kwa kasi kabisa na kuwakamata watu ambao walikuwa wamehusika kwa hivyo tunaoja kwa ni kwamba polisi wetu kweli walali wanafanya kazi ambayo inafaa na ambayo pia tunapasa kuonga mkono so welcome karibu well, thank you so much dr mutua first let me start by giving you the chronology of events which have taken place since our engagement in Somalia. I think you are all aware that leading to our forces going into Somalia, we have an, had several incidences which we refer to as provocative incidences. And after it was resolved that our government had no other recourse but then to confront the enemy end on we knew definitely that there were bound to be repercussions within Kenya itself. And therefore, we take particular measures to make sure that everyone in the country is safe. These instances started in the coast province with other isolated instances in northeastern province. We have mapped the area into regions, identified all the vital installations in the country, allocated specific officers and units to offer 247 security to those installations. But then we realized that they were about to go for also soft targets, soft targets like what happened in the two incidences which took place here in Nairobi about three days ago. I think it's in the public domain that the attack three days ago, one at Mora's Bar, where 12 people were injured. The second incident later in the day took place along Kakalin, where we lost one person and we had a total of 16 Kenyans who were injured. I'm happy to report that out of all those people who are hospitalized, we have only six who are remaining in hospital. The others have since been released, having been treated. Following that incident, we moved very fast. In the day before yesterday, we were able to arrest a person 
who was the author of those two crimes. We were able to arraign the person in court yesterday and in total he had 13 grenades, one AK-47 rifle, one submachine gun and four pistols and also 717 assorted rounds of ammunition. I won't talk much about the case because the matter it's before court. In addition, we have also been able to arrest two other people who are his accomplices. These will also be appearing in court later today or tomorrow early in the morning. My appeal to Kenyans is one. Security, when you are dealing with the terror groups, terror guns, is not the prerogative of one of the security services. Each one of us has a duty, a role to play, and that's why we are asking for their cooperation. Dr. Mutua, during his speech, has alluded to the fact that we require information on all young people who at one time or another are gone across the border. There is no other reason as to why those people might have gone to Samaria. For example, I can give an example of the person we arrested yesterday evening. That person, we have information, he had crossed Samaria in February this year and he, he came back into the country in August. It's only after his arrival late August and early September when he received the arsenal of ammunition which you found displayed during the arrest. We have credible information, we have got quite a number of young people who had crossed to Somalia to fight alongside the Ashabab. These are Kenyans, not necessarily of Somali origin, of Kenyan Somali. And I wanted to make it very clear, we have Kenyans from other tribes. We have the Luyas, we have Kikuyus, we have the Kambas. And all other tribes, I'm only giving those ones ex examples, because we have incidences, we have profiled them. And these are the people where, who we are trading at the moment, so that a similar incident doesn't occur. Mine is to call the fellow Kenyans to join us with us for far information and together I think we can be able to offer security. It is a collective responsibility. Thank you ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. So we'll take this opportunity to uh, take your questions. Just uh, please remember to give us your name and media house. And if a question has already been asked and answered, please let's uh, abstain from uh, from uh, asking it again. Uh, why don't we start in the back there? Then we come here, and then uh, we come forward here. Okay. Uh, my name is John Allen. I'm a reporter with NTV. Mr. Commissioner, uh, we're receiving conflicting reports about an apparent terror attack in. Uh, Lafay in uh, in Mandera. Can you confirm this? And if there are any casualties, also who is responsible for the attack? Because there are allegations that it's Al Shabaab, but it's not yet clear. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Yes, I would like to confirm that there was such attack between Lafay and Fino. This is uh, approximately 310 kilometers from Mandera town. There was an attack on a government vehicle ferrying national examination papers for Form 4 candidates. So far, the security, district security committee of Mandera district are on the way to the scene. So I'm going to get more information and I'll keep you briefed on the same. 
thank you. Uh, just over here. If you can take a microphone, please. Uh, thank you. This is Boris Bashos from AFP News Agency. A follow-up on this one first. Can you confirm that um, a total of four dead in this incident? And do you have any evidence linking this incident in Mandera to the, to the Al-Shabaab? My second question is regarding your appeal to, uh, to vigilance within the Kenyan population. <coughs> Though we understand that, isn't there a risk of uh, putting communities one against the other? Thank you for your question. We have got conflicting information <coughs> because the area where the uh, attack or that incident took place doesn't have network coverage. So the information we are getting is scanty. That's why I'm saying once the DSIC visits the place within the course of today, I will be able to give the full details. The other one, uh, there is no need of uh, uh, whatever is happening in the country today to put communities at log ends. I think I've reiterated that. I've said you should not focus on only people from a certain community. For example, the case where we arrested the person before ye the day before yesterday was not a Somali, was not a Kenyan Somali. So we are talking about the bad elements from any of the communities. And that should be made very clear to our Kenyan people. Thank you. Uh, Tom, down here. <coughs> it's first come, first serve, and then we do uh, the lady back there. My name is Tom Odula from the, <coughs> my name is Tom Odula from the Associated Press. Uh, you, when, during the arrest of the first suspect uh, for the grenade bombings, you said he's a member of a terror cell. Have you been able to dismantle this terror cell, and how wide has this terror cell, uh, how wide is this terror cell? Then the second question is about the Mount Elgon uh, crackdown of the Sabaot uh, Defense Force. Uh, why hasn't there been any investigations on the disappearances of some of the people who were suspects of SLDF? Okay. I think if we can just, uh, uh, Commissioner, allow me just to restrict ourselves to these issues at hand, first of all. The issues of Mount Elgon, you can, uh, you can have a chat on the sideline later on. So we just stick to this uh, issue of the terror cells by itself. Otherwise, we get distracted to other issues. Coming to your first question, I think it's in the public domain that the person pleaded guilty to the charges. There was a total of, of eight charges leveled against him. And one of them was being a member of the authority group, the Shabab. And they pleaded guilty. So I do not know what kind of answer you wanted me to give. Okay, yes, uh, the lady back there. Then we'll take somebody from this side, yes? Yeah, my name is Maureen Moremi from Citizen TV. Uh, my question is, um, we understand that there have been attacks on Kenyan troops. Can you confirm that? And my second question is that there are claims that the Al-Shabab wants to negotiate with the government. Is that true? Who? To negotiate? Al Shabab wants to negotiate with the Kenyan government. I'll take those two questions. The first question is that we're organizing a press conference by the Chief of General Staff, Chief of Defense Forces, either tomorrow or sometime this weekend, and he's the one who's going to touch on the military operation and also going to be giving you briefings on the military. So we're not going to talk about the military aspect today. He will excuse us. Our apologies. There, there are no plans whatsoever, and there's been no indication whatsoever about Kenya negotiating or holding discussions with Al-Shabaab. As you know, Kenya doesn't negotiate with uh, outlawed organizations. So I think the only negotiations that uh, will face Al-Shabaab is what is going on in Somalia right now. Uh, operation, that's our type of negotiation with them because that's our key, key objective. At this side, does this gentleman over here, please? My name is Eric Ombok from Bloomberg News. Yes, uh, yesterday, Kenya sought a clarification from the Somali government on their stand uh, regarding the offensive on the Al-Shabaab. Have you received any feedback from the Somali government? We're working very closely with the Somali government. And as you are aware, last night, the, the government of Somali issued a statement to reiterate the commitment they have in this operation. As you are aware, the Kenyan troops are fighting alongside the transitional federal government of uh, Somali troops. There's been no withdrawal whatsoever 
of the TFG troops, they are still fighting alongside the Kenyan troops, which is a clear indication of the, of the unity in, of purpose in terms of fighting this. We have looked at the statements made by President uh, Sheikh Sharif, and uh, it's been very, very clear that he said that he wants Kenya to be able to fight together with his troops, which is what we are doing. But he does not want Kenya to remain behind or occupy any part of Somalia, and we have made that very clear. Our objective has never been to occupy or to spend an hour more than necessary in Somalia. Our job is to, to may, uh, attain our, our objective, and that is to be able to curtail and dismantle the network uh, called Al-Shabaab. There was us uh, in the back there on the right hand side. Then uh, there was somebody here. Then we go back to John Alanamu. Yes, and then you come in. Alafu, lazima tu malizie tu mebakisha daka kama tano hivi. So just one, one question, please, because we only have five minutes left. Hussein eh? Mohammed, Citizen TV Kenya. My question is to the police commissioner. If Kenya is not uh, negotiating with the Al Shabaab, what is being done to free the hostages? And who are you talking to? Okay. Do you want to answer that? Or we just leave that to the military? Military. Yeah. I think those are issues that will be covered tomorrow by the military. Tomorrow or the following day by the military. Thank you. Uh, just over here. Uh, I'm Sam Ogina from K24 TV. As much as you've said that uh, Kenyan troops will not spend a minute or, or so in Somalia, that is if not necessary, but also we are receiving reports that Al-Shabaab are declaring war on Kenyan troops. How do you respond to that? Well, as far as we know is that uh, the Al-Shabaab troops have been shooting back at Kenyan troops as soon as Kenyan troops have been shooting at Al-Shabaab troops, so that is war. So I don't think they are declaring anything new. There's fighting going on. Fighting is not one-sided. It's two-sided. So if somebody is shooting back at you, you're already fighting them. Uh, uh, John Alamnamu, please. And then to Malizia. Uh, Dr. Mutua, you said that uh, the Kenyan government won't negotiate with the, with the Al-Shabaab, but has the Al-Shabaab leadership reached out to the Kenyan government? And uh, to uh, the Mr. Police Commissioner, uh, who, if you have found out who exactly was behind the OTC attack, the person that died, there are conflicting reports that he was a suicide bomber and all that the grenade was uh, thrown into a crowd. Just uh, some confirmation from yourself. Okay. Uh, thank you, General. No, this, uh, the Al-Shabaab uh, as a network has not at all communicated to Kenya. As far as we are concerned right now, they are running scared, helter skelter, everywhere. So I don't think they're in a position to communicate anything to us. So nobody has issued any indication of talking to us as Al-Shabaab. So nobody has actually communicated to us or indicated that they want to negotiate or anything at all. I think they are busy running for their lives as we speak. And the question about the young man who died. I want to inform you that that person has no links with the events which took place. In fact, from the information that we have received, that the person we arrested the day before yesterday and a total of 15 grenades and the other sort of weapons. And it's the same person with us, with its accomplices, who are responsible for the two attacks. That was that person is by tribe. I cannot give the name before. Maybe the members of the family have been notified. Was not involved in any way. Was just a victim. Okay. And lastly, there's a question here. Uh, there's a microphone right behind you, please. Your media house and name. Well, um, what advice would you give to, let's say, the family in Manchester debating whether or not to cancel their Christmas holiday to Kenya? Uh, we'd like to say one thing is that before the Kenyan government decided to undertake its operations in uh, Somalia, we had minimized the threat of terror in this country uh, significantly, especially the threat against Al uh, from Al Shabaab. So we're very confident that Kenya is a very secure country to come to as uh, tourists. The threat of terrorism will always be there, the same way there's always a threat like the one that was in London with the, with the London bombing of the subway of the railway station, or in Madrid, or uh, the threats that we continue hearing, different vehicles in New York City. The threat will always be there, uh, and I think it's an international problem. But tourists coming to this country 
should not fear. There will be no threat at all to their lives. So we are asking everybody out there to view this as an international problem, which our government officials, together with the international partners, uh, throughout the world are trying to combat. Because as you realize, with the, the decimation, more or less, of Al-Qaeda, Al-Shabaab is the only terrorist organization left that is recruiting and training our terror terrorists that they are able to send to all parts of the world. So what we're doing here is trying to curtail uh, that power. But Kenya as a country is a safe country. And if you go to the Maasai Mara and other places, you find it's full of tourists and other areas, and we assure them of, uh, of their security. Thank you very much for the briefing today. I'd like to thank you. We are going to have a cup of tea outside here, and you can have a chat with the police commissioner and uh, myself. I'm going to request the police commissioner to give you a parting shot, something that maybe he'd like you to, to, to know, and then we finalize. The commissioner. I want to say that I have got the confidence in all the security agencies we have in this country. The Kenya police with its many units, the CID, the general service unit, the general duty police, the administration police, and our support units like the KWS, they are doing a commendable job. And we are urging them. This is the time to go the extra mile, to go beyond the core of duty, because we have a responsibility at this point in time to offer security to our nation. Thank you. And in that line also, I'd like to point out that uh, it's important to know that this is a, an EGAD and AU-sanctioned operation uh, that is a Kenyan operation together with TFG. I know there are reports talking about other countries supporting us in that, uh, that well, we've received support in the past uh, in various aspects from the U.S. government uh, and other countries, but they are not involved at all in the operations that are going on currently in Somalia. Thank you very much and God bless you.